receive the joy of your glory, giving thanks to God, who has called you into the heavenly kingdom. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, 
by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean, and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Victime Pascali laudes, Imolen Christiani, Agnus redem idoves, Christus innocens patri, Reconciliavit, Peccatores. Mors et vita duello, Confixere mirando, Dugs vite mortos, Regnad vivos. Dignobis Maria, Quid vistid in vigia, sepulcrum Christos viventis, et gloriam vidi resurgentis. Angelic tos testes, sodarium et vestes, so rexit Christus pes mea, precedet soas in Galilea. Simus Christum so rexise, amor tu is vere, tu nobis victor rex, Miserere, Amen, Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, A week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other things, other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank everybody for being here on this Sunday afternoon. Usually Sunday afternoons, everybody is kind of tired. And so, thanks for being here, for taking the time to spend and worship the Lord, and to spend time together as family, as community, because we are family. I just want to read just a little excerpt from St. Faustina's diary, which tells us of the genesis of this feast that we celebrate today, this feast of divine mercy. The Lord said to St. Faustina, my daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. 
I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the font of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. Everything that exists has come forth from the very depths of my most tender mercy. Every soul in its relation to me will contemplate my love and mercy throughout eternity. The feast of mercy emerged from the very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the font of my mercy. <clears throat> it's a powerful message. So here's my question. What would you give for mercy? What would you pay for mercy? But before you answer that question, I want to look at the first, at the opening prayer, the collect. Because it's important that we have an understanding and grasp, as it says in the prayer, of what God is offering us here through his tender mercy and how it becomes possible for us. Listen. God of everlasting love and mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people that you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what this prayer is telling us, what this prayer is revealing to us, and what this prayer is reminding us of is our very identity, who we are, and how it is that we have come to this identity. It is the crisis of our time, the crisis of identity. We don't know who we are anymore. It is the reason why there is so much confusion in the world that we now identify ourselves by what we do instead of who we are. The number of letters at the end of our name, the number of zeros at the end of our paycheck, and on and on, and why we identify ourselves by our sexual orientation, gender fluidity, and all of that other confusing stuff that's out there. Because we are confused about our identity. We were baptized into Christ. And when we were baptized, the prayer says that we were given a spirit of adoption. 
a spirit of sonship. We are all sons of the Father, not in a biological sense, in an ontological sense. Ontology is the study of being. When we were baptized, our nature was changed. We were configured to Jesus Christ. Listen to what St. Paul says. There is not Greek, Jew, circumcision, or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free. But Christ is all in all. Christ is all in all. So now let's turn to the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles and examine what is said. The community of believers was of one heart and mind. Why? Because they understood who they were. They understood that they were one body in Christ, that Christ was all in all, and so they were of one heart and one mind. The scripture says that they had everything in common, and that there was no needy person among them. If those who owned property or houses sold them and they brought the proceeds of the sale and they put them at the feet of the apostles. Now I'm not saying that you need to leave here and empty your bank accounts and go and sell your homes and possessions and put everything at the feet of Bishop Labashi. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is it is very important that we have a clear understanding of who we are and that we are of one heart and one mind and that everything that we have is in common. Because the scripture says that everything was distributed to each according to need. It's important that we are there and that we embrace this mystery. Why? Because mercy is a mystery. Mercy is a mystery. You know, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people believed that in order to be holy, they had to stay away from everything that would make them unclean and sinful. And so they had all of these different rites of purifications. They washed their hands. They did all of this stuff. But it was supposed to be an outward sign of an interior attitude. And so if you were sick, if you were ill, if you were a leper, they stayed away from you. Couldn't touch a corpse because if you touched the corpse, you were unclean. You were a sinner. And if you were a sinner, you could have no part of God. It was a warped sense of holiness. And so Jesus came to teach us what holiness really means. Because Jesus is the very one when people were sick, he touched them, he healed them, he raised the dead, he touched corpses, and he taught us that if we wanted to be holy, that holiness was mercy. Holiness is mercy. Mercy is a mystery. In our baptism, we were set free. There were lines and lines and lines of people going to confession before Mass. And by the way, if there are people who didn't get to go to confession before Mass, I'll stay after Mass. Will you stay after Mass, Father Adrian, hear confessions? You're not too tired, are you? Huh? 
He's 30 years old. I'm 70. <laughs> and so the point is, the point is, is that when we go to confession, when we're baptized, when we cooperate with grace, grace is making me holy. Grace, the nature of grace, is designed to do two things, to heal what is wounded and to strengthen what is weak. I'm going to say it again. The nature of grace is designed to heal what is wounded and to strengthen what is weak. And so I come to the Lord and I ask him for mercy. But the mystery is this. As the scripture said, that each was distributed according to need. If I'm going to receive God's mercy, I have to be willing to extend to others what I've received, to extend to others what they need. Otherwise, it's the same as it was for the apostles on the first day of the week. The doors were locked. Why? Because they were afraid. And so when people hurt us by the things that they say, when people hurt us by the things that they do, when people hurt us because of the things that they fail to say, when people hurt us because of the things that they fail to do, we're wounded. And so we lock the doors of our hearts because we feel that they're not safe for us. We stay away. And we think that that's making us safe but all it's doing is isolating us. It's isolating us. And we carry that stuff. And we're not meant to carry that stuff. So I want to lead all of us this afternoon in a little exercise in the mystery of mercy. And I promise you that you will feel unburdened. So I'm going to ask everybody right now, close your eyes. Everybody, please close your eyes. And repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, forgive. I forgive. Name all of the people in your heart, okay, that you need to forgive silently, all of them that you need to forgive for all of the things that they said, for all of the things that they've done, for all of the things that they failed to say, for all of the things that they failed to do that hurt me. And I set them free. And I turn them over to Jesus for him to do with as he pleases. Amen. You may open your eyes. Forgiveness is that simple. Forgiveness has nothing to do with your feelings. Forgiveness is an act of the will. The hurt feelings are a result of the wounds that we have incurred by all of those things that were said and done, failed to be said and done, that we carry. And when we set people free, we are setting them free because Jesus set me free. And what we are saying is, I no longer want to hold them hostage. I no longer want to hold them hostage. And now the floodgates of God's grace are able to flood the doors of my heart that are open. Jesus said, peace be with you. Peace in the heart is the sure sign that the mystery of mercy is actively and presently working in my life. I'm going to say it again. 
peace in the heart is the sure sign that God's mercy is actively and presently working in my heart. You notice that when Jesus came and Pete and Thomas wasn't there, and the other apostles said, we've seen the Lord. Thomas was a little arrogant, unbelieving. And Jesus didn't criticize him, condemn him, chastise him. Simply said to him, Thomas, put your hand into my side. Plumb the depths of the mercy in my heart. Go there, Thomas, because you need it. This is what we're being invited to do every single time we go to confession, to place our hands into his side, to plumb the depths of his mercy. But we have to be willing, as the disciples were in the very beginning, the community of believers, they were of one heart, and mind, and they had everything in common, and there was no needy person among them, most especially for forgiveness, and they distributed to each according to the need. I want to end with this quote from Scripture, from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must do also. And over all these, Put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were called in one body, because Christ is all in all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As witnesses of the resurrection, the apostles were sent forth to continue the work of Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the mission of the church and the needs of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. 
that, led by the successors of Peter and the apostles, the church will boldly proclaim, proclaim truth of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who guide the economy of nations will distribute resources fairly among all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people weighed down by guilt may find pardon and peace in the divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our working week will be transformed by the joy of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parishioners of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary and St. Leo parishes, and especially for all benefactors of the St. John Paul II and St. Faustina Shrine, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As your people continue the work of the apostolic witness, we beseech you, most merciful Father, to grant our petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes. We're going to have a collection, and I just want everybody to know that the proceeds of that collection are going to be used uh, toward the restoration of our organ that is we're going to be working on. Thank you.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have been brought to birth by new, brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept, that you bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those whom, whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days and your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable 
so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Thus also your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some sure and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen and Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you in your company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect on our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, Father Adrian and I are going to take the relics. We will come to the foot of the sanctuary. We will bless you with them, and we will process around the church to place them in their permanent uh, place in the reliquary. And we will have a prayer of dedication, and then we will process back here to the sanctuary for the final blessing. Bow down for the blessing. Stano nad brzegiem, szukał ludzi gotowych pójść za nim, by łowić serca sług Bożych pragną. Litany to the divine mercy. Divine mercy gushing forth from the bosom of the Father, I trust in you. Divine mercy, greatest attribute of God, I trust in you. Divine mercy, incomprehensible mystery, I trust in you. Divine mercy, fountain gushing forth from the mystery of the most blessed Trinity, I trust in you. Divine mercy, unfathomed by any intellect, human or angelic. I trust in you. Divine mercy from which wells forth all life and happiness. I trust in you. Divine mercy better than the heavens. I trust in you. Divine mercy source of miracles and wonders. I trust in you. Divine mercy encompassing the whole universe. I trust in you. Divine mercy descending to earth in the person of the incarnate word. I trust you. Divine mercy which flowed out from the open wound of the heart of Jesus. I trust you. 
divine mercy enclosed in the heart of Jesus for us and especially for sinners. I trust in you. Divine mercy unfathomed in the institution of the sacred host. I trust in you. Divine mercy in the founding of the Holy Church. I trust in you. Divine mercy in the sacrament of holy baptism. I trust in you. Divine mercy in our justification through Jesus Christ. I trust in you. Divine mercy accompanying us through our whole life. I trust in you. Divine mercy embracing us especially at the hour of death. I trust in you. Divine mercy endowing us with immortal life. I trust in you. Divine mercy accompanying us every moment of our life. I trust in you. Divine mercy shielding us from the fire of hell. I trust in you. Divine mercy in the conversation conversion of hardened sinners. I trust in you. Divine mercy astonishment for angels incomprehensible to saints. I trust in you. Divine mercy unfathomed in all the mysteries of God. I trust in you. Divine mercy lifting us out of every misery. I trust in you. Divine mercy, source of our happiness and joy. I trust you. Divine mercy in calling us forth from nothingness to existence. I trust you. Divine mercy embracing all the works of his hands. I trust you. Divine mercy, crown of God's hand, all God's handiwork. I trust you. Divine mercy in which we are all immersed. I trust you. Divine mercy, sweet relief for anguished hearts. I trust in you. Divine mercy, only hope of despairing souls. I trust in you. Divine mercy, repose of hearts, peace amidst fear. I trust in you. Divine mercy, delight and ecstasy of holy souls. I trust in you. Divine mercy, inspiring hope against all hope. I trust in you. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible. Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Our hope, our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, you do not forbid us to represent your saints in stone or paint, so that as often as we look upon their likenesses with the eyes of the body, we may with the eyes of the mind meditate upon their holiness and be led to imitate their deeds. In your kindness we beg you, to bless and sanctify these statues meant to honor and call to mind your saints. Pope St. John Paul II and St. Saint Sister Faustina, may all who in their presence humbly strive to serve and honor them by their merits and intercession gain for you grace in the present life and eternal glory in the life to come. The Lord be with you. And with your Let us pray. God, the creator of all things visible and invisible, and the consecrator of all that is holy, be pleased to assist at the dedication of this altar of the Lord and to pour out on it your blessing and sanctifying power as we all unworthily dedicated it with our in order to pay homage to you and to your saints may experience your merciful aid through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. God, who fashion everlasting dwelling place for your self, out of the chosen saints John Paul II and Saint Faustina, bestow heavenly increase on this work done in your name, and grant that we may always be aided by the merits of the saints whose relics we reverently enclose in this altar through Christ our Lord. Please be seated just a moment. This altar shrine is the fruit of the work of many, many people. First, I want to thank Father Adrian, because by now, many of you know he's pretty well connected. <laughs> he's the one who was able to get the first class relic of Pope St. John Paul II through his connections, through Cardinal Jeevish yes. in Poland. And our parish is blessed insofar as, many reasons, but it's blessed insofar as we are one of the few parishes in the nation that has a first-class relic of Pope St. John Paul II. So there are many blessings to be experienced, to pray with these relics. Remember, we don't pray to the saints, we pray with them. We're, communion, we're part of the communion of saints. I want to thank uh, Bernie Hammond for all of his hard work. He made that altar. He's very, very gifted and talented. Bernie, thank you so much for all of the work. <laughs> Bob Camo did all of the electrical work. And so, Bob, thank you very much. And the choir, thank you so much for the beautiful job that you've, that you've done. I want to thank the service. I want to thank especially the seminarians who traveled all the way from Providence to come to here today. Christian brought his two buddies, uh, no, three, no, two buddies with him to come and serve. And I want to thank the service in the parish for their dedication. I want to thank all of you for your faithfulness, your commitment. I think I speak for Father Adrian, I think I speak for Deacon Dick, that your presence here does something, it does something for our faith as well. Deacon Dick, I want to thank you for being here too. <clears throat> you are welcome here anytime to come and see come and deaconate Mass. I want to thank all of the people from St. Mary's and St. Peter's who are here. Thank you for your presence here. Remember, we're one family. We're all brothers in the Lord. And when we start to see that, when we start to see Jesus in each other, then the world is going to begin to take notice. 
That's what was convincing to the early Christians. It's what converted the hearts of many, many pagans. They began to realize that there was something to these Christian people that they weren't mm -hmm. worshiping a dead man. So God bless you all. I want to mention also Father Paul because he donated the relics of Sister Faustina uh, because that was uh, uh, his private relics and he donated that to the parish. I don't know if because of his devotion to the parish or maybe when I told him how much money Sister was asking for the donation for the relics <laughs> from Poland and then he told me I will give mine. So. That's good. Thank you for doing that for the parish. And thank you for your openness because you were open when I told you about that shrine. Uh, and so he was open. And thank you for letting me work uh, towards that shrine. So thank you so much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Oh, wait a minute. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs>